Hello students. In this video, I am going to tell you about bus interfacing. Bus interfacing deals with how an input output device connects to the bus. In this picture of a computer with various IO devices, here we focus on how various devices as well as processor and memory interface with the bus. That is these lines. Bus interfacing uses the notion of tri-stating, where there are three stages. We are familiar with the first two stages, zero and one, where zero represents low voltage and one represents high voltage. And we have another third stage that is represented by Z, and that means disconnected or high impedance state. So in this disconnected or high impedance state, as if the IO devices is disconnected from the bus. Here is how we represent it diagrammatically. Here is the device X and this is the bus, or we could have the other way around. Here is the bus and this is the device. In either case, we have the uh, logic enable line that represents as E, and if E equal one, Y takes the value of X, otherwise, y is disconnected from x that means y equal z here is a diagram representing how trace stating works i have taken an example where we have two bit bus these are the two bus lines we have a device d which can write and read these bits and i have denoted this by a w1 and r1 and w2 and r2 for the two bits we have here a enable line corresponding to the read of the data from the bus that is e and i have another enable line that represents f that corresponding to writing data on the bus likewise i have another device d prime with r1 prime w1 prime r2 prime w2 prime as well as these enable lines are e prime and f prime Now, in order to support transfer of data from D to D prime, what do you think the values of the various enable lines? Well, we should have F equal to one corresponding to D writing and E equal to zero. Likewise, we should have E prime equal to one corresponding to D prime reading and F prime zero. Likewise, we can use the pattern e equal to one, f equal to zero, e prime equal to zero, and f prime equal to one to have a situation where d prime is giving some data to d. The important thing is that we can have a situation where the device d decides to disconnect itself from the bus by setting both e and f to be zero. In this state, it is known to be tri-stated device. Device D is known to be tri-stated, or in other words, it is disconnected from the bus. That is a high impedance between device D and the bus. This state is useful, for example, when device D is not about to involve any bus transaction. And let's say device D prime is communicating with a third device that is not shown in this diagram. In this diagram, what do you think will happen if we set both F and F prime, these enable lines to be one? If we set both F and F prime to be one, it is going to be a case of bus protocol error. This situation is never supposed to happen. And if this happens, you could have bad things, not only in terms of program failing, but also in terms of the computer itself getting spoiled or worse, a fire happenings. Now, why do we have this tri stating? As suggested earlier, if we have tri stating where devices logically and electrically are disconnected from the bus, then we can have potentially support a large fan out. That is, 
we can support a situation where there are a large number of devices connected to the bus because most devices are going to be tri-stated in any way what do you think will happen without tri-stating without tri-stating we can have either large current flow and low voltage because large current flow can cause bad things including system heat up and fire another advantage of tri-stating as indicated in the previous diagram is that a device can use the same set of bus lines for input as well as output that is whenever they are needed note that not all devices need to write to the bus lines depending on the situation for example memory need not drive address lines at all let's continue to bus interfacing bus master the device that determines who will speak and who will listen who will read and who will write who will transmit and who will receive it is called the bus master usually the central processing unit the cpu is the bus master but some clever buses can allow other devices to take over when necessary such as direct memory access or dmi input and output are always designated relative to the bus master that means whenever a read is command then the data is going into the bus master and whenever the command is write that means the data is going out from the bus master each bus has several lines dedicated to one of three separate duties there are control lines address lines and data lines control lines are mostly unidirectional they carries out control commands to coordinate and control all activities within the bus master address lines are unidirectional the bus master used them to designate which device it wants to communicate and it in which memory location data lines are bidirectional so that they can carry binary data into or out from the bus master bus error bus error is an important topic we know only one io device is allowed to share a bus at any one time as output the parallel bus system within a computer are such that there may be many transmitters and many receivers connected onto the same bus but only one transmitter can use the bus at any one time the selection of which unit is to transmit is controlled by the microprocessor normally through a process called address decoding however since bus signal lines have to be shared the bus must be designed such that two devices must never try to drive a line at the same time otherwise interference would occur resulting in high current spikes and it will de determine voltage levels on the bus electrical noise and possible pre premature component failures can also be occurred by making use of tri state logic on the bus drivers the digital output is disconnected when the device using the driver is not using the bus i have already explained in the tri state bus if both two devices enable writing to the bus line pins that that were f and f prime it will cause system failure or program failure again if two or more input output devices use the bus as output it will cause bus conflict but if one input output is used as output and multiple input output devices are used as input that will cause no bus error because connecting all devices can receive that input if necessary otherwise they can discard it and pass it to the next connecting device there are some major causes of bus error 
the main cause is multi when, when multiple device using the bus as output. Second one is when weight states are not maintained properly. Third one is if an IO device causes the bus pin to stack at level one or zero. And the last one, bus error can be caused by glitch. Then what is weight state? Weight state is a timeout period during which a CPU or bus lies idle. Weight states are sometimes required because different components function at different clock speeds. For example, if the CPU is much faster than the memory chips, it may need to sit idle during some clock cycles so that the memory chips can catch up with the CPU speed. If weight states are not maintained properly, there will be no synchronization in bus line and it will occur bus error. Glitch. A glitch is a short-lived fault in a system. It is often used to describe a transient fault that corrects itself and is therefore difficult to troubleshoot. I will explain glitch in, in later videos. Here are some questions related to this topic. I wish you have listened to this video lecture sincerely. Now think and try to answer the questions correctly. Thank you.